Hello, hi, and welcome to today's presentation. I can see a couple of you have started to come into the room. Hi, can I ask you if you've got a video on just to make sure that you've um, turned your video off? So that's great. We're just going to give people a couple more minutes to enter the room. Um, so if I could ask you all at the bottom of your screens, as you know, there's a chat box. Can you just let us know where you're located? Where are you dialing in from? Hopefully you can all see that my colleague Mira, career coach Mira is also online. She's in the chat room. We're just going to give people another two minutes to join. A couple of people still entering the room. Okay. Can you let me know if you can all hear me okay? Can you all see the chat box? Can you all access it? Great. Hi. Hi, Ibrahim. Hi, Susan. Perfect. Great. Magdi from Germany. Hi. Okay, we're going to give it another two minutes before we get started. Okay. What's the weather like where you all are today? So here I'm based in London. It's um, was sleeting, almost snowing earlier, but uh, much drier now. Hey, Egypt. Ah, snowing in Germany. Yes, I, I guess it's perfect weather in Egypt. Lovely. Okay, guys, we're going to give it just probably one more minute and then I will let us get started. Okay. So we'll probably have some late joiners. So we'll just, uh, as they come, we'll just get them to be admitted to the room. Okay, everyone. So let's get started. Hi, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jackie Lawrence. I'm one of the career coaches at Udacity. Today, we are going to be talking about culture fit, identifying your core values and aligning them with your career. Just to give you a few minutes, I'll talk to you for a few minutes about the structure of today's session. I'm going to talk for about 45 minutes on the topic, and then there will be time for Q&As. I'm going to keep everyone muted to avoid background noise as we go along. If you have any questions, please type them in the chat box. I also have with me my co-host, career coach Mira. She's here to assist me with managing this webinar and the chat box. So let's get started. A little background about me. So as I mentioned to you before, I'm a career coach at Udacity, but I'm also a business strategy and development coach. From a business strategy perspective, I help individuals and organizations to unlock barriers to growth and development so that they can move towards achieving their business and policy goals. From a career perspective, I help students, I help professionals who are looking to transition or who are just looking at exploring options of where they can go next. So without further ado, why don't we move on to today's agenda? And we're just going to take you through that. So what's on the topic? What's on the list? So today's agenda consists of what are core values? We're going to do a value exercise. What is cultural fit? We're going to look at defining it and what it actually means. Researching and assessing an organization's culture. We'll then look at the importance of aligning core values with business culture, how to show cultural fit in an interview, and then we'll move on to Q&A time. So moving on to the next slide, we are going to do a poll. Um, so just to let you know, this poll is anonymous. So um, I want you all to just have a little think back at um, places where you've worked 
And have a think, have you ever worked for a company where you felt that you really fit in? So it's that gut feeling where when you're somewhere, you can be your authentic self. You don't need to pretend that you're someone else. You're just being you. So I'm just about to launch this poll and I want you to think about this question. Have you ever worked for a company where you felt that you really fit in? Yes, no, or maybe you're not sure. Okay, and here goes. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys about a minute to answer. Okay, interesting. Ah, that is interesting. What's your gut instinct tell you? Did you really feel authentic? So that's interesting. Okay, I'm gonna give it another 30 seconds. Waiting for that one more vote to come in. Okay. We've got 80% there. Can we move it up a notch? Okay. I'm going to get ready to end the poll. Results are interesting. Okay, two more seconds. Okay, we're gonna end the poll and the poll results are in. So have you ever worked for a company where you felt that you really fit in? 50% of you said yes. No were 25% and unsure 25%. So that's a very sort of balanced view. 50% of you have had that experience. And it's great when you actually feel that you fit into an organization. And the thing is, sometimes you don't actually really appreciate it or realize it until you move on. You don't actually realize how well you fit into that organization. So now that we've got our first poll done, let's move on to our next slide. So we're gonna take a look now at what are core values? Well, our values define what is most important to us. They form our beliefs, our help us how to define how we perceive things, the choices we make, our actions, and the behaviors we show. Not all values are equal. We prioritize them under pressure. Some values trump or force out other values. If two of your values, for example, may include stability and challenge, but there are some instances where you feel the timing isn't right to challenge, you will then prioritize stability over challenge. Our values also change over time as we attain goals and our views and understanding. So I think looking at values, we are now going to move on to the next one, identifying your core values. So how do you identify your core values? Some of you may have tried to do this. Some of you have, may never have really thought deeply about your values. So values can be categorized into different headings. You have family values, career values, societal values. For the purpose of this webinar, we're going to focus on career values. Career values can be subdivided into three further categories. We'll call these intrinsic values, so these are intangible rewards that keep you motivated in your job while you get up and you go to work and engaged. You then have extrinsic values. These are linked to the conditions that you find at work, such as the office environment and earning potential. Then there are lifestyle values. These are more closely linked to your personal values. They're associated with where you want to live and your lifetime goals. Moving on to our next slide, so we now have another poll. This is our second poll. And the poll question is, have you ever completed a values exercise? So you may have done one recently, so you may answer yes. You may have done one, but it's been a while since you last did one. And like I say, values change or no. So I'm about to launch this poll now. So have a little think, my launch button. Okay. Getting ready to do the second poll. Here goes. So again, thinking about what you've been doing in the past and your job search strategy. Have you ever completed a values exercise? Okay, it's interesting. Okay, the polls are changing. Yes, yes, but it's been a while, no, okay. It's good. Perfect. We currently have 100% already. 
great. So I'm going to end the poll. And you know, so what's the answer? Yes, recently, so that's only 20% of you. 40% of you have actually carried out a values exercise, but it's been a while since you last did one. And again, 40% no. Um, and um, it's great for the 20% of you who have done one recently. So that should help you um, be more focused and strategic with your job strategy search. Uh, for those of you who have done it a while ago, um, you might want to think about doing it again, because as I say, values change over time. And for those of you who have never done one, well, after the end of this webinar, you might think about doing one. So let me just close that poll. So moving on to our next slide. Here, you're gonna see a list of core values. Um, there's about 100 values listed here, but value lists can come, you know, you can get about 220 words on the of values. It really just depends on you. And the whole point of having this core value list is to allow you to be able to have a look through and pick out certain words that resonate with you, your values. So for some of you, balance might be one of your values, service might be one of your values, strength. The whole point of looking at your core values is to identify about 10 values, which you would consider your top 10 values, and then try and reduce this down to five. Um, because if you have too many values, it can become quite overwhelming. And um, the point of it is then once you pick out what values mean most to you, define what it means to you. Okay. So loyalty might be one of your values, but how you define loyalty and how someone else defines loyalty in a career context may be different. And so there will be times when you're in your career and even your job search where these values will compete with each other. And so it's not just about picking out the values that resonate with you, but it's also about putting them in an order or priority so that, that when there's a conflict, you can think about which value trumps which other value. So I thought it'd be helpful if we have a go at actually doing a values exercise. So the next couple of slides will take us through a values exercise. Now, there are lots of values exercises out there. You don't have to do this particular one. Um, and you know, if you're interested, I can share afterwards in Student Hub a couple of exercises that you can do yourself online. They're totally free. You don't have to pay for them. But it's a good way of checking in with yourself as to whether your values are the same or whether they've moved on. So let's take a look at this core values exercise. So identifying your values. Let's have a look. We're going to start off by this looking at intrinsic values. So like I said before, intrinsic values are those values where you have intangible rewards that keep you motivated and engaged at your job. So here below, you're going to see a list of five intrinsic values. And what I want you to have a go at doing is on a scale of one to five, with five being the most important, rank how important these intrinsic values are to you. So for the purpose of today, um, you know, because it takes a bit of time to do this, all I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to sort of have a look at these values. So number one, having variety and change at work. Some of you may get bored doing the same task each day, whilst others may prefer a set routine. Helping others, so that's like working for a company with a good cause, one that gives back to society. Some people find that very, very key and important. They want to feel that they're working somewhere where society values uh, or benefits from it. The next factor is feeling respected at work. So a survey by the Society for Human Resource Management found that 65% of all workers said that respectful treatment of all employees is an important factor of job satisfaction. Taking risks. Are you someone that seeks constant thrill and excitement at work or are you more risk averse? Having your work recognised. Receiving public recognition from those higher up in the organisation is a key priority for many people. So what I'd like you to have a go at doing now is just type in the chat box which of the above you would rank as number five. So remember, number five is the most important to you. Which ranks as number five? Or you might want to put what rank, which one ranks as number one. So which of these intrinsic values are least important to you? So I'm just going to give you a moment to 
tap that in, have a little look, have a little thing, and then just tap in. You might just put taking risk five, or you might put taking risk one. All depends. So I'd just like to know your thoughts on this. And what you'll probably find is different people have totally different priorities, different ways of thinking as to what's important to you. So remember, number one might be having variety and change at work. Is that a priority for you? Is that key? Do you get bored with the same task each day? Is helping others a key priority to you? Feeling respected at work, taking risks, having your work recognised. Okay, coming in. Five, helping others. One, taking risks. Yep, so that's quite interesting. So, five, some people think five is the most important. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Okay, so we've got another two exercises to do. So what I'm going to do, ah, Susan's come through. Again, a five, having variety. One, having your work recognised. Mm. Feeling respected at work. Top priority. Yeah, a lot of people resonate with that. Having variety and change. Yeah, that, that's quite, quite important for people as well. That's great. Thanks very much for your contributions on intrinsic values. So why don't we take a look at the second factor? Like I said, we can break career values down into three segments. So the next segment we're going to look at is extrinsic values. So these are linked to the conditions you find at work such as your office environment, vacation policy and earning potential. Is there a career development path? Again, on a scale of one to five, with five being the most important, I'm gonna ask you to rank how important are these, I should say, extrinsic values to you. So one, traveling to work, or traveling for work rather. So some people might think it's very exotic to be able to get on a plane and to be traveling around or to be traveling around your country quite regularly. Some people, that doesn't really appeal to them. Getting a high salary, how important is that to you? What about the amount of vacation leave you can take? So when I worked in the corporate world, we um, had the ability to buy like an extra five or six days holiday. Of course, it came out of your salary. Um, and so for some people, they would buy six days additional salary for them, a six days additional vacation for them, it was worth compensating the loss of their salary or a lower salary for the additional vacation leave. Setting your own hours. This has been ranked by employees as one of the most important factors for job satisfaction. Having autonomy at work. Some of you may find micromanagement unbearable. So, you know, when you've got that boss or that person who constantly looks over your shoulder. So again, let's have a think about what's the most important to you with five being the most important and which one of these extrinsic values is the least important to you. So you'd rank that as one. Traveling for work, is it a perk or a drain? Getting a high salary, amount of vacation leave you can take, setting your own hours, or having autonomy at work. Let's know your thoughts. Okay, just again in the chat box. Hey, having autonomy at work. Traveling for work number one, yeah. A lot of people, in the beginning, it might be really exciting, right? After a while, it can become a drain. Setting your own hours and getting a high salary. Yeah, often the two can um, either tee up with each other or, you know, getting a salary, high salary for some people may be number one. They're not so bothered about having a high salary. Might be more important about the environment they work in. Yep, five, setting your own hours. Yeah, there's a lot of, of like-minded people on here in terms of their extrinsic values. That's great. Ah, yes. A comment from my co-host. Ah, so yes, this is also a way for negotiations. Many students often ask. Okay, so my co-host Mira has just mentioned uh, a comment here that this is also a way of negotiations. Many students often ask, how do we get better salaries? Yeah, and you can, and it's a good point actually, Mira. You know, you can often um, 
compensate for things or you can often trade things in um you know it's funny this week i was having a, a talk with someone and they um really liked a job but the problem was the travel was a lot further than what they were previously having to do in terms of commuting to work um and you know one of the things that we discussed about possibly trading off is whether it was possible for that individual to work from home an additional day a week so you know think about you know points that you can negotiate can you ask for non-cash benefits um you know these are key things you might decide that actually if i can work from home two days a week maybe that you know taking that job with that extra half hour drive isn't so bad or extra half hour commute it's all about you know what benefits you and thinking about your values and the order of priority and then using that as a tactic in your negotiation okay so we're going to move on to the last values exercise um, so we've looked at intrinsic values extrinsic values and now we're going to look at lifestyle values so these are the personal values associated where you want to live, how you spend your free time and your long term goals. Again, we're going to look at them on a scale of one to five, with again, five being the most important to you and one being the least important to you. So spending time with friends and family. This goes back to work life balance, a job with long hours impact with family time so obviously if you're at work for long periods of time it means you have less time to spend with your friends less time to spend with your families living in a big city some people thrive in a big city some people don't like the hustle and bustle of a big city and prefer to work in quieter towns living abroad some people are quite happy to move abroad to pursue their dream jobs some people feel that their ties or their family ties or their friends or other things they feel more tied to where they currently live. So they wouldn't consider moving abroad for a dream job as a prospect for them. It's just not a value that they really rank highly. Saving money. So if you're saving for a home, this may be a critical value for you. And again, becoming a homeowner. So again, in the chat box, type you know your preferences. What's your priority? Number five being your most important. Is it spending time with friends or family? Or is it saving money? What's your lowest priority or what's your lowest value? Let's have a look and see what your thoughts are. Uh, spending time with family and friends. Yes, that's coming in at number five. A couple of you. Yeah, becoming a homeowner, not such a key thing at the moment. And that's fair enough. Living in a big city, number one. Yeah, you know, for some of you, that may just not be an important value when it comes to your values as a priority it may not really factor highly on your list it's not such a big issue so that's great okay let's just move on to the next slide and this is just wrapping it all up in one so the idea is once you've completed all three sections you look at the values that you have rated five so these are your top priorities these are your, going to be your top work priorities. And then you'll look at those values that you've listed as fours and threes. Now, these are still going to be important to you, but they just shouldn't be at the top of your list of search criteria when you're searching for your next job. Next, determine which of the three categories, so whether it's intrinsic, extrinsic, or lifestyle values is most important to you. And then think about, do any of the values within these categories overlap? So work-life balance, spending time with friends and family, some of these values do in a way overlap. Your objective is to figure out what your top five to 10 values are. Like I said before, there are many values that might appeal to you, but if you have too many values, it's just gonna feel overwhelming when you're trying to decide the priority and the order and which values you should take into consideration when you're carrying out your job search strategy. So. Once you've identified these values, your crucial, your critical top five to 10, think about ways that these values could be reflected in your I'll do your job. And this is where you need to take time to sit down and you write down what these words are, what these values are, but define personally, what do they mean to you? What do these values mean to you? And that's gonna take a bit of time and reflection. 
And it's not something that you necessarily have to do on your own. You can start it off on your own. But if you want to talk through any value exercise results, you can always book a one-to-one -one session with a career coach. And, you know, we can take time, sit down and go through your values and talk about why a value ranks over another value and what's really critically important for you as a value when you're doing a job search. Okay, and let's move on to our next slide. So now I just want you to share your thoughts. Do you take values into account when job searching? So think about, you know, past job searches, how you got your current role if you're currently in a job. Did you or do you now take your values into account when job searching? Let's know your thoughts. Be interesting to see how many of you do. Any views, any views? For those of you who've already carried out value exercises, have you actually thought about using it, using those top values as part of your, you know, your job search or, you know, bringing those values to work in your day-to-day -day job and you may not have thought about it it may not be something that you've really thought you need to do or why should you and hopefully by the end of this webinar you will understand the importance of actually you know identifying your core values and taking them with you to work so let's just move on again like i say um you know culture fit now is what we're going to move on to um, and you know what is it what is it people hear this word culture fit a lot so it's basically matching people with business culture so an organization's culture consists of an organization's shared values their symbols behaviors and assumptions I like the way Edgar Schein who's a leading expert on culture defines it he defines it as simply put organization culture is the way we do things around here great culture fit is based on the fact that an employee who feels connected to the values of the business and clicks naturally with the nuances is more likely to thrive business culture varies from organization to organization so many of you who may have worked in a couple of roles may have found that actually depending on where you are the culture just the feel and the environment and the people you work with are very very different one study found that 84% of recruiters surveyed agreed that cultural fit is one of the most important recruitment factors. So let's look at researching and assessing in an organization's culture. So we're gonna to turn to the next slide now. So what does it actually involve? Well, know your values. Before you can actually bring values into researching and assessing an organization's culture, you need to understand your own values. So you, you're looking for is, is an organization's culture a right fit for you? So research, when you're doing your research, use your top values as a filter. When looking at a job description that appeals to you, go through that and think, why is it that it appeals to me? Does it connect and identify with my values? When you're looking at companies and you're looking for their values, search the company's website, look at their mission statement, look at their About Us page. What does it say about the company? What is the company telling you about themselves? Look at company reports. Company reports often give you further information such as the demographics of employees, turnover rates, benefits, healthcare, Again, on LinkedIn, many of your target companies may have LinkedIn pages. So follow your target company on LinkedIn or any blogs that they produce. What you're looking to do is to start building a picture of what this company is like. So moving on to the next slide, there are just two more points that you can include as part of your search. Networking, talk to people in your network to connect with people or connect with people on LinkedIn who may have worked or are currently working at your target company. You know, the best way to find out about a company is really from someone on the inside. Also, remember to use tools like Glassdoor. You can use Glassdoor to check for companies' reviews. Employees often go on to Glassdoor and they will leave reviews about their companies talking about, sometimes they talk about whether they think the benefits are good, salaries are good, whether the people are great to work with. So Glassdoor can really be a helpful tool 
um, in terms of giving you a bit of background history and information from people who are either working at the company or who have worked at the company in the past. So let's move on to our next slide. So I thought what might be helpful is to look at an example of a corporate's values. And so here we've got cool Google's core cool values. Um, and some of you may have looked at Google's values already for those of you who may have applied to Google. But here is an example of what Google's core cool values are. So they say they focus on the user and all else will follow. It's best to do one thing really, really well. Fast is better than slow. Democracy on the web works. You don't need to be at your desk to need an answer. You can make money without doing evil. There's always more information out there. The need for information crossed all borders. You can be serious without a suit and great just isn't good enough. And then what's really good about companies like Google um, is that you can actually go onto Google's philosophy page and you will find that they not only list their core values, but they also provide examples. So they break it down to another level. They actually tell you and define to you what their core value means. So for example, their core value, great just isn't good enough. In that value, they expand on what this core value means in practice. They state, we see being great as something as a starting point, not an end point. We set ourselves goals we know we can't reach yet because we know that by stretching to meet them, we can get further than we expected. So, you know, if you are a goal orientated, innovative person, you will probably resonate with that. So if innovation um, is one of your values and your top values, this is something that might resonate with you. And then they give an example. They say, for when, for example, when one of our engineers saw that search worked well for properly spelled words, he wondered about how it handled typos that led him to create an intuitive and more helpful spell checker. And what that actually tells you about Google is they actually take their employees ideas and views into account. And that can be very important for people um, joining a company. Are you a voice that is heard? Will your voice and your ideas and your thoughts be heard? So that's just an idea of one company. But of course, as you do your searches, I'd encourage you to go onto companies websites, look at their talk about me or about me section just to find out more about what their core values are. So moving on to our next slide, um, an important factor and something that sometimes people don't realize until they arrive at a company and they're already in the role and by which time it's a bit too late. Um, so it's finding out and considering whether a company may have a negative culture. So here are a couple of signs that a company may have a negative culture. As you know, every company culture is unique. And like I say, you get great company cultures. And if you have a great company culture, that company culture is heard and felt. And just so if you have a bad one, a company culture with a bad or poor company culture can create a negative impact and can lead to large staff turnover or overall failure if the problematic issues are not addressed. When you're in a great culture, you'll find that it will encourage growth, ownership, and there will be an environment and trust and open communication with its employees. So let's have a little look at what are the signs of a negative company culture. Poor internal communication. For example, there may be a lack of team spirit. Micromanagement. That's that feeling that you're being under constant scrutiny. This can create an atmosphere of fear in the organization and make employees feel under unnecessary pressure. Focus on profit. Now, you know, it's always good and, you know, you expect companies to want to ensure that they have good quarterly results. That's very important. But if a company is solely focusing on this and leaving no room for employee engagement, that can be detrimental. Low office engagement. Is there much engagement? Is there much engagement between the employees or what the manager tells the employees before an announcement is made, a significant announcement, for example. Is there a lack of empathy? You know, if there is you're ill and you have to take time off work, are you pressured to come back before you need to? 
is there a poor management or leadership style? Do you feel that you can go to your manager? Is your manager approachable? Do they have your backing or your corner? Is there a high staff turnover? And this is often a critical thing to look out, out for. If you find that people are not staying in an organisation for more than a year, why is that? Why can they not retain colleagues for a long time or employees for a long time? But on the converse, you can say, well, people have been there for 10, 15, 20 years. Is that a good thing? Think about it. Does that mean that for a lot of people who might be set in their ways? So, you know, you need to sort of think about the balance and what it might mean. An, an organisation where your ideas are not taken into consideration, and I mentioned this before, because for some people and for some of you, it may be key that your thought process, your thinking and your ideas are at least heard. Um, you don't want to be dismissed or overridden all the time whenever you mention something and you try to contribute. No flexibility. So in this day and age, obviously, where we've got technology and there's no reason in many instances why people can't work from home. If there's no flexibility, you have to be in five days a week. Um, you may have an off day or you may have something important that's arriving at home. And so you may want to work from home that day. And if there's no flexibility about it, you might want to consider whether you want to work in that type of environment. Bad reputation. Um, and you know, that's the whole point of doing your research. When a company is good and has an excellent culture, word gets out. And in the same way, when a company has a poor or bad culture, word also gets out. So keep your ears and your awareness to the ground. You know, be aware of this company, its dealings with other companies, its dealings with its employees. The bottom line is do your research. So let's move on to the next slide. And this is, again, share your thoughts. So have you experienced working in a company with a negative corporate culture? I'd be interested to know. Just let us know your thoughts. Maybe you haven't. Maybe this is something you've never experienced. But if you have, um, just let us know. Yeah. Any experience of working in a company with a negative corporate culture? Not sure. Yeah. Poor management and leadership style. Hmm. Yeah. And unfortunately, it doesn't leave you with a very positive feeling. Um, it can actually really sort of... Uh, then your self-esteem um you know when you're when you're sort of in that environment so um yeah fortunately yeah, a couple of you have actually experienced it so thanks for sharing that okay so like i say let's look at the next slide so why is it important to align your core values with your business culture what's important what does it matter really so let's look at it from both the employer and the employee perspective so let's think about given the amount of time that you spend in the workplace especially for those of you who are looking for full-time work or who are working full-time you know you're giving approximately 40 hours a week if not more to this particular business so you're going to be spending a lot of time there so it's important that you feel happy and you feel connected to where you work. When core values are out of alignment with business values, the employee lacks job satisfaction and is more likely to leave. From an employer's perspective, they're concerned about culture fit because when you know, the employee and the employer's cultures are out of alignment, you're more, they are more likely to face staff retention issues, absenteeism, and absenteeism cost on both sides. So, you know, if, they can't retain staff. It means that they have to spend a lot of money on, again, getting somebody else in, training them up. So there's a cost to a business if their culture fit is not right. Again, absenteeism. So when we have colleagues who are away, somebody has to pick up the workload, right? So that work then gets shared amongst other colleagues. And sometimes if you're stretched and you're overstretched, the last thing you want is to have to be picking up other people's work. So these are things that, you know, it really is critical to get culture fit right. Engagement. If the fit is right, it's more likely as an employee to be fully committed and go above and beyond what is required. So for those of you who said that you've experienced being in a place where you really fit in, you know, the work and the hours may be long. 
but because you really felt you fit in and you enjoyed your time at the hour at the organization you may not have minded committing to such long hours and you know really putting yourself out there when needed and for businesses they really really look for this you know this level of engagement is really critical for a business's success so again, moving on to looking at a couple, couple more points as to why um, it's important to align core values with business culture. And the next slide, productivity. So companies with employees who believe in the goals and values of the organization tend to be more productive. You know, if you're in an environment where you feel you fit, you just feel that you can actually work to the best of your abilities. You know, if you don't feel aligned, your productivity is going to be impacted and poor productivity again leads to more staff retention issues and again will lead to more absenteeism. Communication is more likely to be fully committed and go above and beyond if there's good, clear, transparent communication. Do those higher up, you know, are they clear and transparent about what's going on in the organisation, particularly when it comes to change, change management, when there are reorganisations going on? Cohesion, a team that works together with the same core values functions better. Now, this is not about companies hiring clones. Yeah, you know, when it comes to cultural fit, diversity is still important. But the thing with cultural fit is you may have somebody who's very senior, very mature in age with, you know, a family of three um, versus a young millennial who's quite fresh and maybe just new into the career, working at the same organization. Now, whilst on the surface, when you look at them, you may think, gosh, they're at two different ends of the spectrum. There will be a certain amount of qualities or traits that they share. Um, you know, and these characteristics is what makes the team fit and what then identifies and aligns with the company's values and together creates a good culture fit. Communication, again, collaborative working processes, open communication so these are things and factors that you know companies think about when they're taking employees on and they're hiring for culture fit so thinking about that why it's important to ensure that our values align with our career let's think about it in terms of the job strategy process and when you're actually going for an interview so moving on to our next slide on to how to show cultural fit in an interview sort of You've put all your hard work, so you've got your applications document, documents in, everything's down to a T and you get to the interview stage. One of the key factors that the company will be evaluating is whether you are a right match for the company. Now, this is often one of the main reasons why candidates do not get a job. Remember, the interview process works two ways. It's the candidates opportunity to assess whether they think the role and the company is a right fit for them and vice versa. Also, the interview starts from the time you arrive at the interview site or the company's offices. From your perspective, from the time you arrive at the company's office, be observant. What's the office environment like? What's the receptionist like? Are they stressed? Is there lots of paper on their desk? Are there many people on site? How are people working? Are they working in silo or are there pods on huddles? When you're going through the interview and you get you know, to, the to the time at the end of the interview, use that time when they ask, do you have any questions you want to ask? Use it as an opportunity to find out more about the company's culture. You might want to ask them questions such as, what activities do your team do for fun? You may want to be a bit more direct and just ask them, tell me about your office culture. From an employer's perspective, they are looking to understand who you are as an individual. What drives you? What motivates you? And what demotivates you? What atmosphere do you prefer? So I've just listed a couple of examples of cultural fit interview questions. Tell me about yourself. Now that's quite a wide question, but from that, an employer can elicit what's important to you. So, when you're talking about, tell me about yourself, use it as an opportunity to interweave your values. What are your critical values when you're describing what's important to you and talking about yourself? Weave that into the question. Another question that may come up is describe the type of work environment in which you can give your best. 
So, for example, if you're interviewing at a startup and you realize that you're highly independent, self-motivated, and you excel at working at a fast pace, you'll want to proactively highlight this and all those factors in your answer. However, if you're someone who likes to take your time to understand something before you action it, a startup may not be the right environment for you. If you're used to, for example, working in a quiet office with two or three people in a room, and the company has a large open plan office with lots of background noise, you may not be able to function at your best. And some of you may have you know, experienced working in these different dynamics. I know that I have, and I remember going for an office where there were sort of two and three of us in it, and it was quite quiet at time, to being in an environment where there were like a hundred people on the floor in an open environment. And it really is quite an adaptation that you have to make. So also think about the question when they ask you, do you prefer working alone or as part of a team? Another way they might ask this question is, tell me about a team project you did at work. What was the project? What was your role and what was the outcome? So the candidate's response will help the employer to determine whether they like being part of a team. Also, their attitude, do they blame others for failures or take responsibility? Do they say they did most of the work or do they give credit to teammates? All of this helps the employer to decide whether the candidate will fit in with the other team members. Another question that may often come up, how do you maintain work-life balance? And this is something a lot of people struggle to achieve. Those of you who are remote workers may find that this question often comes up at interviews as a work-life distinction can often be less clear in remote work worlds. The employer is aiming to understand the relationship that work plays in the candidate's overall life and get a view of their priorities they can then evaluate your attitude towards time management and personal values and then assess whether this aligns with the company's values. So that's just some of the questions um, that you know you can consider and you can take away and you can think about how you might be able to weave your core values into it. So I'm just going to quickly um, go on to the last slide which is your takeaway points. So just as a takeaway I just want you to think about know your core values if you don't know what your core values are, then do a value exercise to work them out. You can always book a session with a career coach to go through your results. Job searching. Use your core values to help filter through job descriptions. Thoroughly check out a company's website to understand their beliefs and values. Think about what do you need in a job to make you feel happy or satisfied. Connections. Speak to any connections who may have worked at the company. Look out for warning flags that a company may have a negative corporate culture. Interviews, be prepared. Preparation is key. This is your opportunity to just demonstrate why you're a good fit and culture add. So companies are looking at this now rather than thinking about culture fit. Sometimes you may not tick all the boxes for a company at the time, but the question is, do you have the potential to add value to a company's culture in the long term? What can you bring to the table that's unique? So now we've come to the end of the webinar. So just gonna give you a couple of minutes to share your thoughts. Do you have any Q and A's? Um, so just thinking back and reflecting on, um, you know, what we've just been through, just type any QS questions you may have in the box and share your thoughts with us. So are there any questions here? Let me have a... Any questions? And while you might be doing that, I'll just, um, can we just see the last slide? I'll just put the last slide just to let you know about the um, next webinar that's going to be coming up. So, yeah, so the next webinar will take place on the 2nd of March. It is with Andrea Mia, um, and it's all about entrepreneurial mindset and practical steps to starting your own business. So for those of you who might be interested in that, that's gonna take place on the 2nd of March, 2020 at 2 p.m. So, any questions? Oh, thank you very much. I'm glad you found the webinar helpful, Anna. Should you include your values in your elevator pitch? So question from Anna, thank you, Anna. So your question is, should I include my values in my elevator pitch? And yes, I think you should do. Um, it's very, very worthwhile. It's your opportunity to demonstrate to the company that you've read about them. 
you know so um, if you're targeting you've got a target company in mind if you're going to a networking event um, and in particular if you know um, some of the individuals who might be attending and you know you know what companies that they're at it's your opportunity to be able to um, present yourself and express yourself in your pitch in a way that shows that you know you identify and you know what that company's values are and that you thought about it and that your values are aligned so yeah it's a very good opportunity to be able to um, demonstrate that you know you thought about it and that your values can and do fit in with the companies that you're approaching anyone else so oh thank you very much it's very kind of you thank you guys for joining we're coming up towards the end we've only got a couple of minutes left so thank you i'd like to thank you all for joining i'd like to thank my co-host mira um, for managing the chat room for me thank you very much any last minute questions or is that it from everyone yep any more thank you thank you all much appreciated okay well if that's it i shall give you a couple more minutes back in your diary so that you can um, go and uh, you know do what you need to do i thank you very much for your time because everyone's time is very precious um so i'm just going to sort of put my face there can you all see me hope you can still see me thank you all for joining and um Enjoy the rest of your day, whatever the time is, where you are. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye, Elle.